I'm the one that's freaky, not you. Don't go for a piss. It's episode 36. Are you still <laughs> trying to do bingo calls again? That was fucking terrible. I've been waiting on that for, I've been sitting on that for about two days, and I don't think it even rhymes. No. Piss, piss and, and 36 six. do not rhyme. Six? Sick. Six. And six, maybe. How have you been sitting on that for two days? Because what would you come up with then? 36? I mean, pick up sticks. I don't exactly. Know. 36. How can you rhyme that? I'm looking them up again. I can't believe it. <laughs> what? According to Mecha Bingo, 36 is just three dozen. 36, which is even worse. Stick with piss. Stick with piss. I'm with you. Thank you. <laughs> well, well, there we go. We've gone back to full fucking circle. I'm still out on piss. I'm still out on piss. <laughs> Welcome to episode 36. I am your bingo host for this evening. My name is Dan. Joined by Andy. Hello. And Penny. Hi. <coughs> My two glamorous assistants. <laughs> So, we have some stuff today, <laughs> oh, good. like normal. I can never do, like, so I've been doing this for what, since... May. Was it May? April? May? I can't remember. It's been so long. I can never do, I can do the intro, since we were talking about before this podcast recorded about being a host. I can do the intro, but then after the intro, I'm like, so, we're all here to listen to what we have to say. Andy's the segue man. Yeah, man. I'll, I'll do the links if you want. Yeah, I think I need some diversion after, like, I say stuff. And here's one he did earlier. Let's listen to it now. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I know what you were trying to do Thanks. there. You were trying to blue Peter me and make me think on the spot, which I would have done, but also... No! It felt funnier just to let you give an example... But then nothing come up. That's not what I was trying to do. It was when you did the links before and you were like, oh, my favourite movie of the year was this. and Or my favourite clip of the year was this. Let's listen now. And then Dan put it yeah. in post. That's yeah. what I was doing. But it's not funny when I yeah. have to explain it. But that's why I let you explain it. I knew where you were. Dan looks confused. Dan didn't. No. <laughs> anyway, that's my fucking catch. Anyway. So... I had a fun week, <laughs> yet again. I always have fun weeks, don't I? I'm either getting pissed and not remembering films, or I don't even That's remember it. what That's happened. It. Pissed and not getting <laughs> I don't even remember what happened last week. I just have fun weeks watching films, or in this case, watching a mixture of weird things. I watched a film every single night since we last recorded, guys. Oof. Is what I'm trying to say. Really? I've watched seven films in seven nights. Who's got that kind of time? That's ridiculous. I think I've had a meeting every night since then. Maybe oh. Dan should do some editing. <laughs> I'm kidding. Fuck, I'm kidding. Like, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Therapy, innit? I'm it? kidding. Yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> so what I did is none of them... Are, I mean, they're all worth talking about, obviously, which is what I'm going to do, but... I've come up with a brand new segment, uh, which has no music, which is Dan's quickfire reviews on his movies of the week, ranking them from best to worst. You need snappier <laughs> titles, mate. <laughs> These are like your Google searches. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's unique. No one's done it before. It's not plagiarized in case anyone fucking comes after me with plagiarism after last keyword challenge <laughs> quiz I did last week. So it's unique and it's official to the brand for the brand of the unusual suspects we have shambleness kev with using for the brand as a <laughs> slogan shut up <laughs> so. can you just tell me the title exactly the same as it was when you said it a minute ago yeah it's not like i made it just up on the spot there exactly. it's called dan's quick fire uh rounds of of g movies he watched during the week ranking them from best to worst i think that's how it you missed the word reviews, reviews. In there, but i mean you weren't far off close yeah i'm on brand like I just, Seven I out of ten. <laughs> Average. <laughs> anyway. Five out of ten. <laughs> Shall we start with the best? And there will be, like... I've saved the one, probably for more talking points, obviously the worst one towards the end, because I feel like there's going to be questions <laughs> about the last one. <laughs> okay. And I'm here for them, so probably that one will be spoiled, but it is the worst one. But I'm going to kick us off with the best one that I watched... And it's also probably one of the weirdest films I've seen in quite some time. It's called It's Such a Beautiful Day. And it's an hour-long film. And it's an experimental dark comedy that's animated with stick figures. 
Right. So, <laughs> and it's the best film I've seen all week. That doesn't sound good. It doesn't, does it? And on paper, it's very, very... I mean, even looking at the poster, it's the most basic of animations, you know? It's like stick... It, there's a guy called Bill, and Bill is the stick man that is on this journey with us. And it's a film about Bill's life and how Bill goes about his day and the many things that happens in Bill's life. And to explain this film is the hardest thing I got. And I've been trying to think about how do I explain the film to people, but it's really unexplainable and I can't really say much. <laughs> that's so. really good for a podcast where you explain movies. <laughs> yeah, handy. <laughs> but that's why I have seven films in this list, just in case. Here's the can... best one. Can't tell you what it's about. Moving on, number two. <laughs> All right. It's a film that's divided into three chapters. It follows Bill, who... During the film, he over time forgets things and forgets things in his life that happened beforehand. Is he a stick man with dementia? Because that's really sad. S somewhat, but it's more of a case of like the way the film is made and shown to you is incredibly unconventional. So without, again, mm -hmm. I don't want to spoil too much because it's the best one I watch, but without spoiling too much, it does the animation in a way where you see the animation itself, but in the background, almost like you've got the animation in like the foreground, but in the backgrounds, there's sort of like these weird real life footage things going on. So it's like a mixture of this stick man animation, but you also have like footage of real life things like blended into it. Okay. And it's not really a film that's like it's an original story like it is an original story and stuff but like it's not really like a s normal movie it's actually one that's like especially for the times we live in i think it's a very very like good film to watch because it goes through a lot and it doesn't really explain a lot to you but like if you get it like you will get it the first time you see it like it's messages it's heavy metaphors obviously penny's probably going to be all over the ship but yeah i love metaphors <laughs> i know all about them <laughs> it came out in 2012 it's made by one guy i think or at least a couple of people yeah. it came out in 2012 and it's it's just really it's got humor on it but it's like very dark humor and it's very it kind of knows it's what film it is in a way it's very like it has its own conscience in the way and it knows that a person's watching it expecting oh a film about animation must be no it plays with you a lot and it's very interesting to say the least but hmm. it's really good got me thinking a lot about life and stuff but yeah it's really really good so that's it's such a beautiful day which is my top film of the week <laughs> this is definitely not a fucking recurrent sick <laughs> my second favorite film is a Denzel Washington film called Fences, which came out in 2016 on Christmas Day. It is not a Christmas Day film to watch with the family. I'll just put that out for people. It basically follows Troy, who Denzel Washington is playing as, and he's like a garbage man in the 1950s. And he kind of uh, is a very simple man. He goes home to his family. He has a son. He has a wife. He lives in kind of like a very nice neighborhood with lots of friends. He has lots of people he chats with and stuff. But he's always, you follow him leaving work over time. So you, the film kind of starts with him leaving his day job, getting paid, talking to his friend, going home. It's all kind of like very one take shot kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. it goes on for like 20 minutes of one take shots, which is insane. The acting is actually quite incredible in this film but he's not as surprised no no it's really good like it's just one of the things probably the best thing about it is the performances and stuff but it's a real um this is hard to not spoil things but it's one that kind of has a little bit of commentary over people who have failed in life and will always put down people who are trying to do things successfully but because they've learned things in their experiences they will use that experience to put the other person down and say, no, life is hard. You're not going to get to where you are because I went through it, because I have problems, because I've experienced the real world and stuff like that. And Denzel is kind of comes across as this nice family man, especially at the start of the film. And then over time, you realize, especially with his relationship with his wife and his son, yeah. that he's he's more and more bitter about this happy lifestyle that he has. And it's a very, I haven't seen Denzel in this kind of like, not necessarily like 
a bad guy role, but like in a, like a very bitter man kind of role. I haven't seen him do anything like this in a while, but the reason why it's called Fences is because he's putting up a fence throughout the film. Will he complete it? You'll have to watch the film to find out. <laughs> the excitement. So I've seen this film and it's based off a play. Yeah. And you can tell that it's sort of built for the stage because there's a lot of shots that are sort of front facing and, and as if you that he's talking directly to an audience or a crowd. Yeah. But it is pretty great. I mean, he is fantastic and that his son as well is also great. You're right. It is, there's a lot of pointing at things that have happened in the past and expecting them to happen again to someone else. That lack of trust that things have progressed and stuff. It's good. Yeah, that's a really good film. I, I'm surprised I kind of got like badgered into watching it. It wasn't one that I picked myself, but I was like, oh, it might be good. I never really watched Denzel Washington because I, he seems to be sort of the guy that's in action films to me, like just like these crappy kind mm. of action good sometimes sometimes you know what i mean like some are but you way. just thinking of the equalizer yeah i'm just thinking of the equalizer. <laughs> but he was in american gangster i don't know if i've seen it in like 2006 ish and that was fantastic and he he wasn't i mean there are action elements in it but it's not specifically an action film and he was incredible i recommend that mm. well maybe we should do a denzel podcast oh wait there is one already I forgot about that. Okay. Is that? <laughs> yeah, there is a po- shout out to the podcast called Denzel Washington is the greatest actor of all time because that is an actual podcast where they watch every yeah. single Denzel Washington film. So there you go. My third favorite. Oh God, we're in number three. Yep. All right, calm down. <laughs> is a documentary. Here we go. And <laughs> it came out. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't well, I don't criticize your features like this. This is no, just me counting down just, best to worst. I'm not criticizing. I just remember your film of the year last year was three documentaries and one fiction. You bloody love a documentary. <laughs> I watch it like a documentary a week, I say. One a week at least, yeah. Unfortunately, sorry. I'm not being critical no. about it. That's a you know, it's good to learn. This, you, you, you could might... have learned about nostrils and stuff, but no, you chose not to. Shh. We're not talking about that here. <laughs> How dare you bring up my medical <laughs> records. Anyway, third favourite film was a film called Crumb. Has anyone seen Crumb? No. Do you know what? I saw it turn up Did you? on our video streaming site and nearly put it on, but I didn't. Well, Crumb is a documentary about Robert Dennis Crumb. And he was a cartoonist back in the day. So he used to draw on comics and stuff. And he had a very... The style I would describe it as, especially for UK people, is if you remember, not necessarily Beano, but if you remember, I think it was called, was it Wiz? (laughs) Was Wiz one of them? It was something like Penn, Wiz. You're the oldest one here. Yeah, do you remember back in the day? Beano and Dandy. I don't remember if Wiz was a thing. It was the sort of style where it was like, um, it very much reminded me of like, it had nudity in it. Like a lot of like, like everyone had big um, faces. And... You're talking about Viz. Is that it? Is oh, that Viz. Fizz, not yeah. Wiz. <laughs> Viz is just Close. dirty coins, isn't it? Yeah, that's... Yeah. Is that where Felix the Cat? No. Was his name Felix? Who's that dirty cat cartoon? Well, he actually um, made it. This oh, time. yeah. Okay, I don't Felix know. the cat. He actually is. No, sorry, Frizz the cat. Fritz, Fritz the, the cat. cat Fritz the, the cat. Here. Fritz the cat. Yeah. Fe- I was like, Felix is the cat from the catfish. <laughs> There's nothing dirty about yeah. that. <laughs> the only thing I know from um, Viz is Johnny Fartpants. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, Johnny Fartpants. Oh, yeah. Is that not where? That. Where did Andy Cap come from? Was he not Viz? B. No. He wasn't really dirty, B-no? was he? No, he wasn't. It was. I don't think Beano or Dandy or any of those had like any kind of no. They were day nudity kind of stuff. Um, the Daily Mirror. Daily Mirror. Okay. Apparently. <laughs> so it's actually a documentary following his life, but it was made in '95, so I didn't know how good it was going to be. Because to be honest, in the documentaries I've watched, there's only a few particular ones pre '90s. I would say that I actually really like. I don't know why, but I I don't like you would think documentaries just telling a story into archive footage and stuff like that. But for some reason, I don't have many before 1990 that I really, really like. I don't know, but either way. So he's a guy who does those kind of cartoons, but it goes through his kind of reasoning for drawing these kind of dirty cartoons. And to give you an example of one of them he used to draw is like 
he would draw a lot of cartoons where he had men who are small men, and there was a picture of them jumping into a lady's vajayjay uh, as, as a whole body, and then coming out the other side in the mouth. Right. Yeah. So they like they it, it, they were on top of like one of those diving boards you've seen like yeah. swimming pools jumping in and then coming out the other side of the mat like it was a water slide. Hmm. It's strange and weird. He also had it goes through his like family life and stuff and his family has all sorts of history of problems. He talks about his obsession to sex as well and a lot of things. He's a very quiet man and he's very like very much like a loner kind of guy, but he has like this insane kind of mind that he talks about and I it's a strange one. Like it's it's definitely one where like the guy himself is the most interesting part of it. The story and the things that happen in it, not so much, but the guy and mm-hmm. what he thinks about things mm-hmm. is the interesting part of it. So I guess you've got to have a weird mind to be a cartoonist. Don't quote me on that. But to, go, <laughs> to, to, to draw things like that every single day constantly, I guess you have to yeah. have a weird, strange mind in a way. He sounds a bit like Ralph Steadman. Who's that? He did the artwork for a lot of Hunter S. Thompson stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. So he drew... Like, if you've seen Fear and Loading, oh, okay, yeah, the yeah, animated yeah. bits in it are... I don't know if he did them himself, but they're done in his style. So it's like slightly gruesome, but generally just fucking surreal. Yeah. He used to blow a lot of ink all over the place as well. But he's also a very quiet, unassuming dude who then draws these fucking masterpieces that are just absolutely bonkers. Yeah. It's an interesting documentary on on this guy. So the next one on the list, we're at number four. These are getting worse, correct? It is getting worse, but I don't think this film is bad. I think it's, it's, it's absolutely fine. I would say this film. Crazy Stupid Love from oh, 2011. Interesting. You were forced into that one, weren't you? Yeah, uh, I definitely was. <laughs> uh, starring Steve Carell and, well, Ryan Gosling's in it, so mm. I was convinced pretty quickly as I am a big fan of Ryan Gosling, just because he's in Blade Runner. Did he say stuff in this movie? He said <laughs> He said a lot more in, in this film than Drive, if that's what you mean. Yeah. If that's your question, Penny. It wasn't totally convincing, though, was it? Probably three times as much. <laughs> <laughs> so 12 words 12 words yeah if people haven't seen it it is a very rom com sort of film but it's actually not too bad I thought it was going to be trash it's kind of set up to be that Steve Carell trashy film you know it's not going to be funny blah 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 the joke's not going to hit all the time it's not bad it's about a guy who kind of his wife divorces him after a long time uh, being married and he's trying to get his manhood back so Ryan Gosling is this uh, younger guy who's like got very suave and stuff, and he's he's very cool with ladies. So he says to Steve, "I can teach you how to become cool like me," and he does throughout the film, only to realize the most important things in life are not just about getting women and stuff. And yeah, there was a message in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like Hitch. It's a lot better than Hitch. Hitch, I did, I couldn't stand Hitch, but it it's all right. Like, I, I, again, I thought it was going to be bad because it was one of those rom com movies that most people would just go, oh, God, not one of these. But it's actually, it's not bad. It's got Emma Stone in it as well. It's got Kevin Bacon. It's got Julianne Moore. It's got a load of fucking people in it. And it follows, like, three or four different couples and their love story, essentially, and how it integrates with everyone else. And it's quite interesting kind of film for a rom com. So nice. Thumbs up from Dan. You love a rom com as well. I do. Right, now we're going to get into stuff that um not so good. So I'll probably like <laughs> it. But it, it, we'll start with the first one, because this might be a Penny film that she has probably have seen, is the 2014 film Creep. Yeah, I watched that with friend of the podcast, Chris. At some point last year, we watched Creep 1 uh-huh. and Creep 2. There's a 2? There's a 2. Oh, I have to watch this. Again. What's the name of his wolf mask? Peaches, no, what's it called? Peaches. Yeah, Peaches, peaches, is, the, peaches is back. Peaches. Mm. So, yeah, Creep is kind of like a kind of like a fan footage film, of course it was. So immediately <laughs> I saw it, I was like, Penny yeah. surely has watched it, and of course she has. Only recently, yeah. though, really. Only last year. Okay. So not enough. so bad. It's about a, um, a video <laughs> graffer, video photographer, whatever. He um, answers an online ad to a guy who says, I'll pay you $1,000 a day to film me. And he's thinking, oh, easy money. I bet it's, I think he says in the film, 
I bet it's some lonely woman who just wants someone to massage her down every night and film her recording her memoirs or something. So he goes to the actual place where this guy is, and the guy he meets is very... It definitely would creep me out the first time. He's very huggy. He yeah. meets him for the first time. He gives him a hug. He's all smiley. He's like, hey, hey, how are you, how are you doing, man? He's like very overly polite and there's definitely something wrong going on from the yeah. first start. I think that's the... Uh, I don't want to say the good thing about it, but the the f- fact that he is creepy in a nice way. Like yeah. He's, like he's very nice and very polite, so you're like... It's a different type of creepy. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, oh, I'm completely creeped out, but he's kind of unassuming, so you're like, oh, he's just sad and weird. Otherwise, you yeah. would fucking run the other way. Yeah, it's an interesting take on a fan footage because it's not exactly like normal fan footage. It doesn't do the whole, you know, things we've probably been used to. But there is the annoying part of this film is the jump scares because mm. they're so they're so obvious because the camera zooms in and you wait for silence bah. and then a loud noise plays. Even though it's like a found footage film, the sound effects come into play and I'm like, who put the sound effects <laughs> into his found footage film? And I was like, yeah, that's that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it was just... That's not right. It's the ad effect to it. And I was just like, okay. The guy is so creepy though. I know that's the name of the film. He's really good. He made me very uncomfortable. He's brilliant in it, whoever his name is. Patrick Bryce and Mark Dublas. I think it's Mark Dublas or something. I can't remember. One, he's really, really good. In it. He genuinely convinced me. Nice, creepy, as Penny said. It's yeah. Good. But it's interesting. It's not too long a film. Mark Duplass. Duplass. It's not too long a film. It's just over an hour and 15. It was all right. It's just had too many uh, jump scare elements where I was like, I know a jump scare is coming here and stuff. And the story kind of is a lot less interesting towards the second half of the film. But it's still, it's it's okay. It's okay. I, I think if you're more of a penny person, you'll probably like it more than me. But there you go. <laughs> it was worth a watch. Chris and I. Like every now and then, like we'll watch two or three films in a row, and it was all right. And we watched, we ended up watching the second one not long after, and it wasn't as good. I mean, it's I can't really remember the story, but it's pretty much the same story. I would think, you know, creepy guy, yeah, wants someone to come and film him and stuff. But um, yeah. yeah, the first the first one's worth a watch if you like that sort of shiz. Shiz. How bad is that? That out of seven, your third worst. I was like, yeah, I've seen it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, whereas I saw the second one. <laughs> the thing is, after Creep, the last two movies take a huge dive into the <laughs> the shit pile, is what I'm yeah. going to say they are. Like, it takes a massive... There's a massive difference between Creep and this next one, which is the second worst film. If you say go, I'm going to punch you. Is go... No. <laughs> the film came out last year. It's called Unsubscribe. <laughs> oh, no. Sounds we're not doing another one of these films, terrible. are we? <laughs> it's a documentary... That's following a 20-something-year-old community college dropout who decided to pursue his dreams of being a famous online personality on our favorite platform, YouTube. I love that I was reading the exact same thing on <laughs> IMDb while you were doing that. Thanks. Break the sausage. <laughs> so I thought that it might be funny. I thought since I can kind of relate to it and like YouTuber, like it had the whole thing going, like YouTubers think they're like the biggest thing in the world. And it kind of rolls on that story where this guy who has like 20 something subscriber and he's like, oh, I'm really famous. I uh, make Let's Play videos and it runs that whole kind of course and stuff. And it's, it's a spoof. It's a mockumentary about like a YouTuber and following his life and stuff. It's an hour and 35 minutes. And Jesus Christ, I wish I got those hour and 35 minutes back. I'm sorry, it's a low budget film. There is the most amazing review on IMDb. 10 out of 10. I made this movie, so I have to give it a 10. Realistically, it's probably a six or so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him respect if that's yeah. the guy who did it. I'll give him that's, that's yeah, some props. It's like some pretty funny moments. Other less funny moments, Brian kicks ass in the row, and honestly, I think the whole cast did a fantastic job. If you're reading this because you watched the movie, thank you for checking it out. Regardless of whether or not you liked it, we put a lot into it and are grateful for anyone who's willing to give us an hour and a half of their time. They also put, oh. posted that review January 28th, 2021. So that was literally like three days ago or something. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I'll give them props. I like when funny. people can take the piss out of their own thing and, instead of being really, really fucking serious about it. <coughs> <coughs> <Found footage. coughs> 
<laughs> I'm sorry to say it. <coughs> Anyway, so, like, it's it's not entirely bad. Like, the only problem with these kind of films, especially mockumentaries, is that when they're taking the piss out of someone, like this guy being a YouTuber, and they're filming him not being funny, and that's the reason he hasn't got subscribers, I don't know what you're meant to laugh at, because the things he's saying aren't funny, therefore it relates to him not being funny in the story, but then what am I to laugh at if he's not really... He's being cringy and not being funny, if you see what I mean. So it's like... Maybe it's yeah. not supposed to be funny. Maybe it's supposed to be cringy in the same it's way comedy. Partridge or The Office is. I mean, it's under comedy, but... Dan loves to laugh, though, remember? Yeah, well, that's do. true. I... He does love to laugh. But I, The Office isn't funny, particularly. It's how Brent reacts to things and his, like, constant bravery at trying to be the, the fucking best friend to everyone. And this might be the same thing. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right well i tried it, i tried i feel really defensive about this bloke now because he put himself down in his own no, review I, i'm gonna fucking bat for him i like the idea of it and i think it's all right in places but i think it's it's way too long it's way too long and it just it's just not funny like it's not it's a mockumentary and usually we're, there's like, no mock obviously mockumentary's gotta have some yeah, the mock is not even funny, though. That's the thing. That's the problem. Is like the, You can mock someone and make it funny, but it's not that funny because it's just it's the same joke over and over. This guy's really crap at making, being a YouTuber, making videos. He thinks he's the God's gift because he's a YouTuber. You know, yeah, but you can't do that for an hour and 35 minutes. Yeah. I got a bit bored after a while. I'm like, okay, I get it, fine, whatever. Fine. Is there like any character development? Like, does he end realizing that he's not the big dick? Well, that would spoil it, but yeah, there is character development. Uh, yeah, it's just yeah, it, it's it's all it's uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's, okay. It's, it's okay. It, you know, I can't say any more than that. I don't recommend it, but it's it's okay. It's okay. It's just just below average, I would say. So uh, a six. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said it was a six. Yeah, and then the final film, the worst film I watched this week and this is where the questions are going to come flying in i hope but here we go i watched airliner sky battle from 2017 what's that <sighs> airliner sky battle yeah it sounds like a pc game no it's um it came out last year it came out in november 2020 a couple of months oh well no yeah a couple of months ago mm. and um russian operatives hijack a commercial american jet planning to crash it into a nuclear power plant near Washington, D.C., resulting in fallout that will devastate the eastern seaboard. <sighs> you say that, Pen. I was mildly entertained by how bad this was, in a way. I saw the poster and thought it looked ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> the poster is two planes coming, like, together. <laughs> like, about to hit each other. So... I will spoil this one because it's not good <laughs> and the plot is fucking amazing <laughs> and I have to kind of get off my chest a little bit, but it's your stereotypical. There is a plane about to pick up people. There are snakes on it at least or something. There's no snakes, unfortunately. So you got like the commercial plane, which is where the heroes are situated in, right? On this mm. airplane. And like all the planes before I go on are CGI. There's no real plane. <laughs> There's all CGI plane. Even the interior? No. Now the interior... No, ignore that. Ignore that. That's a no, no, question. no, no. It's good you ask, ask that question because the interior is much more confusing. <laughs> so the entire film in this plane... It's Narnia. You're close. The entire film... <laughs> I shouldn't be. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be, but the entire film takes place in first class. So it's smaller... There's only about six rows of seats, and obviously yeah. there's about eight people who are our main characters of the story and the real heroes. But in the back, there's economy class. But we never see economy class. <laughs> we only see first class. But I know there's an economy class because the one stewardess, when she's on the, the phone talking to everyone on board, she's like, everyone in economy may take the seats. Now first class may take the seats. But we only ever see first class being filmed. That's it. I mean, if you're in first class, I imagine that's what it's like. You don't think the economy people... Fucking... <laughs> Social commentary. It's great, not gonna lie. Yeah, of course, of course. Some of us wouldn't know. We're too busy uh, 
slumming it with the rest of the sheep. My dad bought me a first class flight with a load of air miles that they wouldn't let him use any other way for my birthday once. And the looks that I got, knowing what I look like, everyone, I always feel a bit weird going into Waitrose like I shouldn't really be there. People looking at me getting on a first class flight. Woo! Yeah. Poncy rich people. Yeah, I have that feeling when I purchase anything from the organic oil. I sort of feel like I'm out of place here. They have an aisle? I don't even know. <laughs> I've got nothing. I've gone too far. I've revealed Waitrose secrets. I've got no reference for this. I've <laughs> been out of place everywhere. Anyway, <laughs> the point was, so you have this normal airline plane that's just taking off to go to somewhere in America and stuff. And then meanwhile, on the other side of the runway, you have Russian plane hackers who have hijacked a commercial plane and are now taking this plane to crash it into a power plant near Washington, D.C., so it'll blow up Washington, D.C. The whole of it. Mm. The plane's going to blow up the whole of Washington. You're getting it. Okay. They crash into a nuclear reactor, potentially. Yeah, that's what I they was well, yeah. in the yeah. power plant. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I'm explaining it to, yeah. to Ben. Sorry. But it, it... Okay, so you must be wondering, why is it a skyline battle? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dan. That's what I was wondering. Surely, if there's one plane heading towards a power plant and this other plane is heading somewhere else to land safely to all its passengers so it can get there safe, why is there an airline battle? Well, the military cannot stop this plane from heading towards the power plant because the Russian hackers have planted a bug in the software of the military. Right. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So they can't scramble their jets or any anything they can't shoot it out of the sky no they will in a minute <laughs> okay <laughs> so but they can't so their first thing is it's fucking awful this film but it's, it's so bad right it's so unbelievably bad that in some of these scenes when they're talking to each other there are bits where they stumble on their words and they didn't cut it out and it happens like oh. time and time again where they're like we need to we need to <laughs> like cut that out what the fuck like it's so obvious and it's just, oh it's so it feels bad. like birdemic again it's like a a slightly if the guy who made birdemic understood after effects <laughs> i think that's kind of like the feeling i get from this a little bit yeah so they can't scramble their military or fire jets to stop this plane from heading into the power plant so they contact the nearest plane <laughs> <laughs> they contact the nearest plane in the airspace, which is that plane, the passenger plane, uh, yeah. with people on board in first and economy class. And the Secretary of Defense explains the, the pilot and says, we need you to turn back around <laughs> and stop another plane from crashing into a power plant. And rightly so, he kind of goes... What? Well, haven't you scrambled the jet? What, what do you want me for? Well, haven't you scrambled the jets and stuff? It was a software bug. We can't do it. How? And I'm like, is he? As far as I'm aware, passenger planes don't have like guns and shit on them. So how does he want them to <laughs> stop them? To stop the plane. Genuine I'm glad question. You asked Penny. Yeah. Well, I've got another question. Yeah, I knew there was coming. <laughs> Here, go on. They say there's a bug that stops them scrambling the jets. Yes. Surely, if the base knows about it, they could just casually stroll over to a pilot and go, yo, what up? You want to shoot this plane out of the sky? Yeah, they could also send another plane. Yeah. The reason they go to this pilot especially is because, of course, he had 10 years <laughs> in the Air Force, so he will, he, did, yeah. he will know what to do. He still only has a passenger plane, though. And, and I <sighs> quote, well, and hundreds of passengers. Yeah, and hundreds of passengers in the back, mind you. Uh, the whole time I was like, what about the passengers? It gets even, it gets weird. But they also quote that he also had, this pilot that they've contacted has advanced military and cybernetic training. And I don't know what that means, but I... So he's also a hacker? I guess so. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's what cybernetics is. Can you hack one plane from another plane? Or do they mean, has he got his laptop with him? So, before we get to that interesting bit, they have to obviously convince everyone on the plane that should, they should do this, right? <laughs> so, yeah. what they do... How could you... It's their lives on the line. Yeah, how are you going to convince them? So, 
The pilot says to the one stewardess who works on this plane, just the one, the others are in the back, but you don't see them because she does fa- mm-hmm. speak to them, but they're on the phone, you don't see them anyway. So she convinces the first class passengers in my eyes. She's like, there is a plane that's heading towards a power plant and we need everyone's vote. If one person votes no, we won't do it, but the captain has said that he will take everyone's vote into consideration. Now, some people are there with their mother, their husband, their wives, some of them by themselves and stuff. Some of them are like, we can't do it, it's suicidal. Only some of them? Yeah. While some of them are like, hundreds of millions of lives will be lost, we need to do something about this. And I'm thinking, are you fucking having a bubble? Mm. (laughs) Yeah. America. It depends. If they were planning to land in uh, Washington, then it might be a problem. But if they were flying to like Barbados, then fuck it, right? <laughs> they won't land in there. What convinces them is that they find out that the captain has military air experience and they go, oh, we'll be all right then. So they go ahead with it and they all vote yes. The economy passengers didn't have a vote in this, apparently, so they just moved on with first class. That's <laughs> ridiculous. I still need to know how he's supposed to stop them, please. Like, what did they tell him to do? So they go to stop him the first time, and this is what they do. (laughs) Spoilers, the first time. The first attempt they do is they're going to fly over the plane and then land or just kind of hover in front of it because the engines from the plane would cause air turbulence for the one behind it, therefore it lose altitude. So they'll be able to drop the plane down, but they had to get in front of the plane to get the turbulence to come. Yeah. So they say to him, if you can get the plane under 500 feet or something, we'll shoot it out of the sky. So they're like, okay. With what? With a missile. Why can't they do that anyway? It's just a missile. Mm. I don't know. They fire a missile. So they do get it under 500 feet. But a missile that only goes to 500 feet, it won't go any higher. It gets to 500 feet and it stops unless it hits something. It's the, uh, it's the type of film. 500 feet is incredibly <laughs> low. Don't well. take it seriously, because <laughs> it's the kind of film where after watching 20 minutes of it, I was like, I'm in for a bit of a ride. I'm sorry. I was like, yep. So they get it under 500 feet. Then we get stock footage of a man in Afghanistan firing a rocket. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> and the rocket, the CGI rocket completely misses the plane. So that's that plan out the window. Wow. So they were like, our plan is to shoot a really shit missile at it. Okay. Yeah. So what do we do next? Can you guess what's the next thing they do to stop the plane? Just for context really quickly, 500 yeah. feet is 152 meters. 5,000 feet, maybe. I'm not very good at stuff like that. Can you... 5,000 feet. Can you tell me if that's yeah, like as tall as the Eiffel Tower or something? I'm not very good at visualizing distance. As tall as the Eiffel Tower? I don't know. <laughs> like, if you tell me 500 feet, I have no idea how far that is. If you think of like uh, a running track yeah. during the Olympics. Oh, it's not even a full one of those. Yeah, that's not. It's like a side and a half. Maybe 5,000 feet then. That's not very good. Like very high. No. Okay. So the next <laughs> way to shoot, to stop the plane <laughs> is to fly and get in front of it and then break really fast. And then it'll smash into the back of it. And that'll stop it. <laughs> I like your thinking, but no. <laughs> what they do is this is the second attempt they go close to it so they're kind of not side by side but kind of side by side and the secretary of defense says we have one technology available to us and i'm like oh what is this now what the fuck are they going to pull out of the bag it's called synchronized flying where we can if you're close enough we can link to the black box on the other plane and synchronize the movements of your plane with the other plane. No. <sighs> so they I was have thinking, no though, control. Yep. I came up with a... I would then fly the plane, the passenger plane, next to the other plane, but I would get one wing under their wing, and then I would tip it really fast and knock their wing, and they'd go spinning. <laughs> yeah? Oh, I'm fairly Patience. sure that's going to come up at some point. <laughs> Patience, Ben. I'm excited now. So I'm not excited enough to watch it. Of course, the pilot is a super hacker, so he's able to understand all this. So he's like, yeah, of course, that's simple. Obviously, we could synchronize the plane. They synchronize the plane. The terrorists, who are also really bad Russian, not Russian actors, you know, they're like, oh, no, I, bro- I can't do Russian. <laughs> oh, no, I'm I Mario. Bro- <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. But they're, they're like... 
I've lo- like I can't control the plane, blah blah blah. So now they can control the plane, they can bring it down safely alongside their plane. But cleverly, the Russian terrorists turn off the engine because when you turn off the engine, they'll just go straight down. And therefore, they lose synchronization with the other plane. Therefore, that plan did not work. Do you want to guess what plan three is? Wait, hang on, hang on. So, but unless they're over the plant, eventually they're going to have to turn it back on because otherwise they would just keep falling down. Yeah, they do. They do. They get to. Yeah, they would just fall and crash. Oh, okay. Why don't they get near enough so that they're going to turn the engine off and then keep fucking on top of them until they hit the ground? Well, they nearly hit the ground and then they turn the engines back on and miraculously go straight back up again. And they're like, oh, we're de cycling. Yeah, it, it's, it's all over the place. This is bullshit. <laughs> Why don't they get a giant net and put the net over the power plant so when the plane tries to crash into it, nothing but net and everybody's safe? I'll just go on with it because, <laughs> yeah, there's stuff here that's just unexplainable at times so uh bear in mind the passengers are still on board with stopping these people even after the second attempt they're like no we're not gonna go home let's stop these <laughs> fuckers so we're just like what okay so the third attempt they're just like we have no other option we are going to ram it in the sky <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what so if that damages the pilot, the airplane? no because he's an experienced pilot and he knows what he's doing and all the passengers in first class are like if the pilot believes he can do it i believe it too so technically, both of my plans from before were not far off. I could be a pilot. Well, let's see if it works. So they, they <laughs> hit the back wing of the plane. They literally just ram into the back of it. Yeah. And it goes down, but then it, it goes down and they're all celebrating. They're all drinking in first class. Great. One person proposes to his <laughs> wife. <laughs> and it's like, will you marry me? And I'm like, what the fuck Before is going on? Before we all die. We all nearly agree to fucking die. And it's just like, yeah, will you marry me? Yeah, of course, sure, whatever. But before she can say yes, she looks out the window and, oh my God, there's a plane coming straight back up again. (gasps) They survived it from the crash. So the fourth and final attempt. Do you have any last guesses before? What's the actual last attempt before they get this? They fly the plane over the top of it. And they turn their engine off and hope that because they're a passenger plane that they are heavier and it just pushes them to the floor. They're both passenger planes. Oh, maybe they're just hoping their passengers are fatter. (laughs) (laughs) Penny, you were actually really, really close. Yeah! (laughs) Yeah, they're just going to turn their thing off and push them down and eventually they'll like, yeah. But not entirely. Yeah. But not entirely. Because you don't want them to actually smush onto anything i was gonna say this magic pilot who is also <laughs> a fucking military vet walks across the wings and then onto the wing of theirs and then goes kicks the shit out of them and he's got a pistol and he just shoots it. yeah and then he lands both the planes because <gasps> no! he's just an american hero he runs out onto the onto the wing <laughs> he catches a bird and then throws it into their engine all and right, blows all up right, their plane. all right all right so the hacker or the, the terrorist plane sorry not hacker has gained so much in height that uh, they can't reach it because they have too many passengers on board they can't reach start them. chucking them out they've escaped them by going higher into the air basically so the pilot or, or the shooter sorry comes up with a great idea and is like I ain't got a good idea why don't we throw out the coffee machines the <laughs> luggage <laughs> they literally just push everything they open the door the food trolleys are heavy it's not the worst idea. They literally open the fucking door while it's mid-flight oh, yeah, and the that. air's coming and everything. And they just push the trolleys out and suddenly the plane's going up and they're like, yay, we did it. And then plan B of that is they look at the terrorist plane and go, oh, the emergency exit door was broken when we hit it. And of course, there's a guy on the first class area who is a skydiver, and he says, and I quote, open the door, I'll jump from this plane to the other plane, through the emergency exit, and stop the terrorists. So we were both right, Pam. Fucking smashed it. And Zoom high five. And he does. He does. He gets a rope, and he, bear in mind, there are thousands upon thousands of feet in the air. He kind of <laughs> casually goes down it on a rope he's not swinging in the air he's just like very still in the air going down on this rope 
And then uh, he can't reach it, so another guy gets a safety or a belt from one of the fucking uh, seats and jumps and grabs him, and then they both fall into the emergency exit. <laughs> and then try they try to take out the terrorists. They nosedive the plane and jump out of the plane, I assume. I don't know what happens to them. They just sort of disappear from the film, and I'm like, <laughs> did they have parachutes? They probably died in the plane crash. I don't know what happens to them. They literally just go, and they're like, oh, our job here is done. So the plane is heading towards, exactly towards the power plant at this point. They've done their job. And the guys who have jumped on the plane cannot control the plane because it's got some sort of hacking thing, of <sighs> course, because that's where we started with this film. Hackers, Russian hackers and stuff. Yeah. So they can't do anything. It's heading straight towards the power plant. So they cut the engines. And land straight in the middle of a city instead. And they, they land, like, next door on a dirt road. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. Because the engines were on, but they're going to turn off the engines, which deactivates the autopilot, which was turned on, which they couldn't turn off. So that deactivates where it's meant to be heading so that... When they turned off, they glided into a dirt road and landed the plane. No. Yeah, that's bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the Denzel Washington film Flight. That is bullshit. And there was three minutes left of the film, and I was like, okay, this film's over. There's nothing else going to happen. But of course, I thought I got M. Night Shyamalan on this. I thought something actually bad was going to happen. There'd be a little twist. Another plane comes out of nowhere... <coughs> And it's the Russian hacker who's behind it all and his <laughs> private jet drinking some wine as he's heading directly to crash into the power plant. Oh, yeah. You don't want to kill yourself like that. And, Non-drunk. Um, yeah, yeah so both. And then the pilot of the original big airline just goes, not today. I'm not having to do this on my day. I'm six days from <laughs> retirement or a cliche, whatever. And then he just, <laughs> he just, it's a small private jet and he's got a big commercial one and he just pummels it in mid <laughs> Goes down. Wait, I thought he was land. Oh, oh no, he, oh, I don't know. No, care. they were still afloat. It, it's, yeah, it's awful, but it sounds fucking dreadful. It's dreadful, but I had a good time with it, I guess. But it was that makes me want to watch. Oh, what's that movie with Ray Liotta and then she has to land a plane? That's a good one. What there's a good one where like somebody Ray Liotta's, um, he's a bad guy on a plane you know how they put criminals on planes and then they always get out and then Connor. yeah and then then there's some lady in it and she has to fly the plane by talking to someone else back on the ground that's pretty good oh now i just want to watch that she says not being able to find out what it's called ray Liotta has been in a bunch oh, yeah. of films is it air force one no oh yeah that, that's uh <laughs> <laughs> airline sky uh or airline and sky battle from last year if you want a good laugh, don't take it too seriously. Turbulence. <laughs> Recommend it. Sorry, 1997's Turbulence is what I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've just found it. Oh, yeah, Turbulence. Okay. great. And that is my top what a week. seven films of the week, everyone. What a week it's been. Great week. Did you watch them in that order? Yeah, actually, I think I did. <laughs> I think mostly, yeah. I did the last film I watched today Interesting. was Airlines. <laughs> so. Listen closely. A plane has been hijacked out of LaGuardia. <clears throat> yes, sir, we, uh, we damn near hit it. What the hell's going on? Damage report? We're all good. All systems are clear. We are headed to landing. We should touch down in about a couple minutes or so. That order and maintain course. Sir, ATC has instructed us to land. I'm not... The hijacked plane is headed towards Calvert Cliff's nuclear power plant, just outside Washington, D.C. You've got one hour to bring it down. Pen. Yes. What have you got? I didn't watch anything. Oh, Sorry, boo. everyone. So I... Got yourself a host. Have... I'm not a host. Hang on, hang on a second. Really quickly. Really quickly, Pen. Would you rather watch... <laughs> <laughs> the airline film... Mm. Or the animated one. The stick man with dementia. Airplane. And how'd you like that for a segue? Oh, what? It's a beautiful day, you mean? Yeah. Probably the stick man one now. I feel like cool. I know enough about the plane one. Cool, cool. It's a really good film. Don't say the stick man, because it's actually a really fucking good film. So a lot of people love it. Hmm. Have you got any would you rathers for us? 
Look at him. Have so you, smooth. I do. <laughs> wow. More like radio host. It is a bit, isn't it? I feel like Johnny Vaughan. Johnny fucking Vaughan. Hell, what morning. year is this? <laughs> Woo! Have a fucking audience in the background just cheering us on every so often for a fucking segment. I scoured <sighs> the internet for more would you rather questions and I feel like I've exhausted all possibilities. So I have some movie themed ones. Unfortunately, okay. a lot of them are a bit more horror movie because that's the only ones that anybody writes. That's the kind of girl you are. Well, and I couldn't find any more. I think there's one that isn't. And then some weird ones just for fun. So would you rather be trapped in a house with a murderer, but you can't see anything or trapped in a house with a murderer and you can't hear anything? Oh, uh, what kind of murderer is it? <laughs> <laughs> I need details. I mean, one that will kill you. I don't. Okay. Are we talking quick death or are we talking slow death? It depends what mood he's in. Andy, you go into way too much detail on these things. No, honestly. I'm thinking about this. I mean, it's nothing supernatural. Well, like a like a Vernon or a Jason or a. Okay, so so we're talking like a ghost face slasher that's just going to do me in one strike, yeah? Uh, Penny, my answer is because uh, <laughs> I am not so fucking anal about this. I would probably go with I would rather hear. Oh. Simply because feel like if i can hear his footsteps that's all i need if i can't see then that might be a bit of a problem yeah i mean sorry if i if i can only if i can yeah. hear at least then i'll hear his footsteps but then if i can see it de- well no i'm gonna be like andy it depends <laughs> if it's night or day because if it's daylight i can probably see more. nighttime it's Slash nighttime. films at nighttime let's oh, go with that yeah here here 100 here yeah you'd rather be able to hear yes 100 percent. i'd rather be able to see but also i'd like to keep my eyes shut so I can neither hear nor see, and it'll just get the death <laughs> yeah. out of the way quicker. Just, you are the best at... It's not how you play, Andy. It is. That's what I'm getting out of this. I'm, I feel like I'm going to die anyway in these films. So I'm uh, giving myself the best opportunity to die in a quick way. Where's your survival instinct? I don't have any. We've been through this. What if he's going to kill you me. really, 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 really slowly? Well, then... <sighs> Depends how long I can keep my eyes shut for. Depends how he treats me. Does he bring me dinner? Does he buy me out? Does he get me lunch? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Is it a slow death via poison or is it like a long, drawn out, painful death? I hate you guys. Poison? Yeah. Just like a little bit of bleach every day. If it was poison, <laughs> what would seeing and hearing have to do with anything? He might be talking about having poison me, but I won't be able to hear him. <laughs> or I might not be able to see the poison on the food. Oh, see? you're true. That's true. That's true. See, there's benefits. There's questions to this. Okay, it's all about right. analysis. Yeah, all relevant questions. <laughs> um, I can't remember what I said. What did I say? I don't care. Death, but also <laughs> I'm going to shut my eyes. Done. There we go. Andy, ladies and gentlemen. Would you rather play with a Ouija board or spend the weekend in a haunted cabin in the woods? Assuming that you guys both believe in that shit before you... You know, something bad's going to happen either way. Play with a Ouija board. You'd rather have a ghost yeah. chase you than a Be- murderer. Because, no, 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 no. There was no talk of murder here. It was just, I oh, want to no, play the Ouija board. <laughs> he loves a ball game. Something's going to get you. I suppose they're both ghosts, aren't they? Because I said haunted cabin. That wasn't in the fucking contract. So haunted cabin in the woods or haunted Ouija board. But someone's going to get me. Yeah, there's ghosts involved. Okay. If it's a Ouija board, I guess it's ghost. If it's in a cabin, I guess it's a murderer, like a Jason type. Like a supernatural murder, yeah. I thought that, but I've technically written haunted cabin. So, ghosts all around. Well, you're the boss. Feel free to change it. Yeah, no, I prefer the ghost because, one, you can pl- mess around with the board itself by putting some good old pranks in there. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> secondly... I would like to speak to the ghost just to find out, and there's one fucking reason only, can they connect to the internet, and how can they <laughs> manipulate the bandwidth speeds mm. in Unfriended? Because that's all I want to know from a ghost, really. Can they connect to the internet? That's a really good question. I wonder if yeah. it depends when yeah. you died. Like, if you were a ghost from the 1900s, you wouldn't be able to use the internet, but a ghost from last week would know. But how do we know? But how do we I don't know, know. I'm just I'm speculating. There's been no research into internet ghosts, and I would like to know. So we have Luigi Boy to communicate, and therefore we can ask him, him or her. What's really interesting is that when you said, if you're a ghost from the 1900s, my earphones started to crackle and I couldn't hear anything. Ooh. Mine did too. Yeah. (laughs) Mine didn't. Maybe it is the internet ghost. Fuck. That's because you don't believe. I would like to be in the cabin. I figure there'll be a hot tub, nice fireplace, maybe a barbecue, 
and then I can ask whoever is coming to murder me to do it quickly. We know, we know. If cardio is important, oh, <laughs> and also I would try and booby trap the shit out of it. I'd be taking lessons from Kevin McAllister. Yeah, it seems to me that your choices are based on I want to be wined and dined first before <laughs> I get into this situation. That's all I seem to find out. From before me. a ghost fucks me, I want to be spoiled a little bit. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm learning from last time when it was like, do you want to be fucked by the beast or the other guy? Tarzan. Tarzan. There's no banging Tarzan. in this one, I'm afraid. Well, there's none in yours, but there is a mine. I'm saying it up. <laughs> it's part of the deal. Would you rather be an Ent from Lord of the Rings? There's that the big tree thing, right? The big oh, tree people. The fuck what? is an Ent? What's an Ent? Yeah. I don't... Isn't that the big tree people from Lord of the Rings? <laughs> the tree people, you mean? I don't fucking know. It's all about walking. I don't know. The thing I read called them an ent, an E-N-T. They're called woodwalkers, actually. <laughs> Fucked if I know. I have seen them now, though. Good research, Pen. Um, yes, yes, that is called an ent. Fuck oh, you, Daniel. Okay. All right. I've done a Google. I didn't know, so. There you go. Would you rather be one of those or a cat from Cats? Like the new Cats. Oh, oh god that's a tricky one if you're a cat from cats do you have to hang out with the other cats from cats probably because <laughs> yeah, no one else big... is going to want to be friends with you then i'm going to be the tree oh fucking james corden is in there <laughs> yeah i'm out i'm out if corden's there if rebel wilson's there if fucking uh gd dench is there i'm fucking out I'll, yeah I'm... I'm gonna be a tree i'm gonna hang out with the whomping willow as well yeah, it's mainly down to the people. I think I'd have more enjoyment with the, the actual the trees than uh, James Corden. Plus, imagine all the puns you could use. You could tell everyone to leave you alone. <laughs> Would you like some dinner? <laughs> yeah. Did you guys That's eat before we recorded? <laughs> I feel like neither of you did. Yeah. No. <laughs> I haven't eaten yet. Oh, yeah. This one I really enjoyed. So uh, going through lots of Would You Rathers, unless they're really, you know, like, do you want dicks for fingers or ball bags for toes or whatever it is? They, they're kind of within sure. a similar theme. You know, do you want to fight Freddy or Jason? Or, and they kind of... Yeah. This one, not sure why these two things go together. Um, would you rather be thrown onto a desert island with the cast of The Hunger Games or... Okay. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? <laughs> oh, fuck that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> every day, day of the week. Yeah, we'd get fucking pieces, we'd be radical, we'd get to shout cowabunga each other and they'd go yeah. surfing. I'm fuck I mean I would do that fucking now if I could. If it was a choice between hanging out with you two or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, <laughs> I'm still hanging out with them. Do we need to talk about which incarnation of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I mean, I quite recently watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Batman. <laughs> Why do you? There's an animated film. Were the ones from the nineties Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles? Yeah, because they were the heroes in the... Are you talking Michael right? Bay, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? No, no one's ever talking oh. Michael Bay, Teenage Mutant Ninja no. That would be a real twist, isn't it? Wait, is that your answer, Dan? You want to hang out with no, those no, 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 no. The problem with this is I see a real issue with the Hunger Games thing, because if you go to the desert island with a bunch of the people from the Hunger Games, they're going to try and kill you. Because <laughs> yeah, they're going to be true. the last one. They'll think it's Hunger Games. They're yeah. all survivalists, so they would know how to keep you alive. Unless they didn't want you alive. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, whereas the turtles, you know, the heroes in the hard shell... Only know how to order pizza. They would want a pizza, <laughs> wouldn't be able to get delivered, and I imagine they'd get a fucking Hawaiian, and that would piss me off more. Oh, no. Then I would want to be on the Hunger Games and dead. You have two personalities here. You just convinced yourself that <laughs> definitely I picked Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and now you've gone, wait, well, we'll order Hawaiian pizza, but you can't even order it because you're out in the desert and they have no survival skills. Pineapple on a pizza is a deal breaker. Yeah, I think I'm just fickle about pineapple on pizza. I should get in the bin. I would probably pick the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because if they, do, if they don't survive, I can eat them. Yeah. Think about how much turtle soup you could have. Fucking mm. lovely. You could live in there. Shel like you could have a shell for shelter. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You would only need one, though. You don't want to be shellfish. <laughs> That's not even... Whatever. That made me laugh too much. <laughs> I just didn't uh, know why those two things went together. That's not... That's a fish pun, though. That's not really a turtle well, it's shell, a shell pun. pun. It's a shell pun. Yeah, but shellfish. Come on. Dan, you're so shelly. Well, I'm sorry that that shell and <laughs> yes, selfish yes. have the same sound. Okay, I wasn't. That was hard work. Phonics with Andy. Would you rather face Dracula with a toothpick, as in try and kill him, not just look at him? Because I know what you guys are like. 
face Dracula <laughs> with a toothpick or Wolfman with a dog whistle. You have to try and... Um, Wolfman with a dog whistle. Yeah, mm. you've got to try and kill one of them, but you are only armed with either a toothpick or a dog whistle. So, I mean, <laughs> if you were to stab Dracula with a toothpick, I'm thinking it's not going to go directly into his heart. Maybe, maybe just give him a little enough. bit of a pinch. No. Mm. So, and the wolf whistle would piss it off. Probably. Make it worse, wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't really know how they work. I know you can't hear them. Do they, does it make dogs stop what they're doing? Or does it make them mad? I thought it raises their ears up and they just kind of listen for it. Yeah. And then follow the noise. Maybe that would be good. Maybe it would stop the wolf man and you could run away. I don't know. Could I trade? What do you mean? You can't have both. What, fight Wolfman with a toothpick and Dracula yeah. with a dog whistle? Yeah. If you could explain to me why that's better and how that would be more useful. Okay. All right. All right, Bennett. All right. Here we go. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. So Come on, Lally McBeal. So Dracula first. The wolf whistle would be either annoying, even though he can't really hear it, but he does have big ears, right? Bats generally have good hearing. So. Oh, yep. yeah. Okay. So I would just constantly annoy the shit out of him until he runs away, or confuse him <laughs> so he just doesn't know what the fuck. He, I, I get oh. into his head more than he gets into my head, therefore yeah. Yeah. I would use the wolf whistle as a sort of tactic to kind of like, I'm the one that's freaky, not you. Because sort of <laughs> I'm the one that's weird. Because he'd be like, "Why is this prick got a whistle? That's fucked up." I'm keeping away from him. Exactly. What makes you think you wouldn't annoy him to the point where he would attack you? Um, because he'd probably come up to me and say he's too rich for my blood. Oh no, no one. Okay. I don't, right. know, what <laughs> I don't know what that means. How come I can't no. make fucking puns? <laughs> Because you don't make him make sense. Yeah. you got to go basic. He's too rich for my blood. Oh, fuck's sake. And he's being shellfish and keeping all the puns to himself. It, it's more yep. of a case of, like, I'm just going to annoy the fuck out of him with the whistle as much as I can until he goes away. That was my okay. original premise with that. I'll give you that. Side of it. <laughs> um, what was the other one? I'm still thinking about rich for my blood. Yeah. <laughs> then you could fight Wolfman with a toothpick. So... I okay, that one's a bit more tricky. But dogs love sticks. Dogs do love they sticks. Love chasing oh, sticks. Yeah. So it's a shame he's a wolf, though. So and it's a toothpick, <laughs> not a stick. He probably <laughs> hasn't had any like playtime for a while, so a <laughs> toothpick would probably suffice in this situation. I would say maybe. Yeah. Desperate, maybe. Give him a scratch behind the ear, and you'd be friends. Yeah, I think. Yeah, in in Dracula's I'll case, annoy him. In the Wolfman's case, be a good boy. Andy, um, <laughs> I don't know what's happening anymore, but do you have an answer? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go for the dog whistle and the wolf man. I mean, I look pretty much like a wolf man anyway. He would just think we were brothers. It'd probably be fine. And they'd be like, look, we can use this and annoy the fuck out of Dracula. <laughs> so that too. Yeah. yeah. Or befriend the wolf man to get at Dracula and tell him to attack Dracula. <laughs> Don't be copying my answer. But he's too rich for Dracula's blood or something, right? Oh, come on. I Pat. don't know. Jesus. I'm still trying to work out yours. Round of applause. Oh. This is the worst podcast. Yep. The show of all time. <laughs> They're getting worse. Yeah. They're definitely getting worse. Yeah. This is the We're last movie themed one. Would you rather live forever in Jar Jar Binks' body or Jabba <laughs> the Hutt's body? Oh, okay. Well, there's, so there's, I'll let Andy go first with this one. So there's two questions here. When you say live forever, are we talking we've made a house out of their body, or are we talking we are that person? Um, you're. I'm thinking Freaky Friday. <laughs> you're, oh, okay. I hadn't. So you have the voice and everything. Yeah, your conscious is in. Yeah, is in Jar Jar Binks's okay. body or Jabba's okay. body. Okay. So Jabba is minted, but he also looks like a giant slug. Jar Jar is thick as Looks shit, like a but he has slug. got a fun tongue, and that could come in handy. <laughs> so, pardon me. <laughs> I didn't mean for anything like that. I'm getting mine out of the gutter, Bennett. What else is it? Never, don't. Never mind. Go, go. I don't. <laughs> never mind. Don't ask the questions. Nope. You don't want to know. It's for licking seventeen cornettos at once. Yep. No, you'd waste that because you don't even like mint cornettos, and we all know they're the best ones. Dan, what's your favourite flavour cornetto? <laughs> um. <laughs> Why am I going along with this? Uh, the original. Okay. 
<laughs> Get back to the question, for fuck's sake. Would you rather have a mint chocolate chip, Cornetto, or be Jabba the Hutt? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're the only one that would pick Jabba. Yeah, I am. I'm going to go for Charger. And why? Because he can do shit, can't he? I mean, I know he's a useless prick, and he, he doesn't... Well, he's just a useless prick. No, he killed he killed a droid. He killed a droid. He does kill some droids. I'm sure f- in Episode one of the one. clone series, he turns into a... He has a lightsaber. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. He turns into a lightsaber. Maybe I've had a fever dream. I'm still going to stick with Jabba, though. <laughs> no, I'm going to stick with Jar Jar. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Put me down for one Jar Jar, please. Okay. Dan? Uh, um, I... I'll probably go with Jabba. In the Star Wars universe, because I'm not really that... Careful uh, who, what questions you're asking me about Star Wars. About it, but we, this is going to be great. We do have an expert on hand. Because you both hate Star Wars. I don't hate Star Wars, I just don't get the hype with it. But is there multiple Jabbas, or is there just the one? So there's one Jabba, but there yeah. is a family of huts. Okay, so there is... <laughs> so I am not... Ex- a family <laughs> of huts. Pizza the Hut is not one of them. That's the one I want to be. Um, Pizza Hut. Yeah, I thought it might be. <laughs> so I, I'm not distinct looking. There are others like me, right? I don't think they're as big or noticeable. As big as Jabba the Hut, basically. So, but Jabba is the biggest he's of the, the huts. He's the biggest hut. <laughs> well, he's like the... He's the top dog. He's like the godfather yeah. of the hut mafia, we'll say. Yeah, I'll make him offer he can't refuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I, I'd probably pick Jabba because all he seems to do all day is sit on his arse yeah. and eat. Yeah, um, hang out around with a barely clothed layer. Yeah, that's not really where I'm going with this. But like, I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> like, why did you pick that one? But he just seems to have like an easy life uh, until he gets killed i guess <laughs> in the, but hmm, i don't know that's a tricky one does jar jar get shit in the films are people like you're a prick or is that just in life no people love him okay. he becomes well i mean you're a prick when have you ever seen a star wars character go up to someone and go you're a prick anakin <laughs> yes i am i mean a lot of people should have said it's anakin in fairness i'd watch it if they do that um i think the gungans think he's useless like his race think he's useless but Amadala. Do they all talk like him? Yeah, pretty much. We stop, we Because like, yeah. you could technically <laughs> like learn a new accent, couldn't you? And then you wouldn't have to sound like that anymore. Sure. Annie, we need to go. He's got some skills. I mean, he can breathe underwater and stuff. Hmm. He's got gills on the on like a fish, right? Yeah, but also he becomes like a senator. Oh fuck. <laughs> What have they done there? That's like fucking Boris getting into power. Jesus. Dan's like, no, I definitely want to sit on my ass all day. I stick with my decision. Yeah, I'm sticking with Jabba. <laughs> I, really I just want to be. I just want to be lazy and play fucking Counter Strike like Jabba does probably every day. So that's what we want. Yeah. To. Whereas I'll go out and fix the world. Yeah, that's the kind of man you are. It's true. It's bad. I'm not surprised by those answers. <laughs> anyway, would you Thank rather? You. <laughs> These just made me laugh. So, would you rather? Have carrots for fingers mm-hmm. or have crispy fried skin. A bit like you were battered. Like you wouldn't be in batter, but it would be like your skin was kind of battered. Oh, there that's... were a few questions on this one, Andy. It was a little bit more in depth. Like, do the carrots go rotten? Do they fall off? Are they replaced with like baby carrots and they grow? So these are my questions. Feel free to answer them before yeah, I ask Yeah, that's them. the situation with the carrots because we want to know how uh, they're used by days. I feel like they would decay the same speed as the rest of you like i don't feel like they would decay any quicker but they don't bend or anything like they're literally like carrots so they don't they don't have joints obviously okay and the skin yeah nobody likes soggy batter no it's crispy (laughs) talk us through how you're going to waterproof it yeah but a little bit of rain or you know moisture uh rain max (laughs) tinfoil so you've got to wear a rain mac at all times just in case it well no if i'm in my house how do you clean yourself how are you gonna have a shower um, I didn't vent. What happens if you dribble or get spat on or wee on your shoes? <laughs> Except your shoes are actually feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? You would no. be forever crispy. I don't know. You could still wash forever and you'd go crispy. soggy, but when you dried, you'd go crispy again. There you go. Christ, that's so. That's made it worse. I'm out. <laughs> I'm in for carrots then. Okay. Well, one more question about the crispy skin. If I go for like, say, I want to sunbathe, 
right? <laughs> Do I overcook myself easily, even though I'm already at mm. crispy texture? Have I like, it's kind of the microwavable situation going on where you reheat myself? Does it go even more golden brown? Yeah, you've got to be a little mm. bit careful. You're not going to want to put oil okay. on yourself. And stay out for too long, I imagine. Butter instead. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll probably go with the crispy skin since I don't go out in the sun anyway, so I'll probably fit that <laughs> life kind of lifestyle. So, yeah, definitely. Um, I also don't go out in the sun all that often, but I feel like I'd be less inclined to eat carrot fingers as I would crispy skin. <laughs> So I'm going for the carrot fingers. You just want a fucking tasty snack on your fucking hand <laughs> at all times. That's what you just want. Oh, as opposed to my whole body being fucking batter. I'm Are not you gonna mental? fucking eat my skin. I'm just saying. Yeah, but I will. That's why I'm going for carrots. <laughs> yeah. W- <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Agree to disc. <laughs> Would you rather leave a trail of mucus everywhere you went or have frog hands? <laughs> I already do, Pen. Mm. Anyway, out of uh, one nostril, <laughs> snail trail. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about it. No. All right. Well, sorry, say it again. Sorry, I just leave no. a trail of mucus like a snail, or have frog hands. Yeah. I think I'd like frog hands. I bet they'd be fun. Difficult to play the piano with frog hands. Uh, it's difficult for me to play the piano with my real hands. Difficult to play the piano when you don't even play <laughs> yeah. the piano as a human. What, what's your fucking point? What are these questions? Andy, what are these fucking (laughs) questions that you come up with? It's really difficult to play the piano. You know the one I play regularly on a daily basis. You can't play the violin. Fuck's sake. Um, I think it'd be difficult to type on a keyboard, and we all do that quite often. Everything comes to typing. I think they would be fun, though. (laughs) That's the first time I've ever mentioned typing. Stick on a wall. Can you climb up walls? You said the carrots. Oh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's because I'm working a lot at the moment. Can you climb up a wall if you have the frog hands? I think that's what I'm going with because I think that would be fun. Oh, fuck but you yeah. don't have frog feet. Oh, what's the fucking point then? Do you have frog legs? Can you jump? No, just frog hands. Snail. I'd want a frog tongue too, but I'm going with that's not snail part of the trail. question. Snail trail. Because, actually, no, this is a good reason to have the trail, right? If you get lost in the woods... You could always find your way back. <laughs> oh, yeah, those regular trips to the woods you that take. That happens all the time. Shut up. <laughs> no one knows about my wood trip. I go alone, all right? Yeah, that's th- why he gets lost. That's why yeah. you get lost. Yeah, that's why I need it. I need this in my life right now. Alternatively, if you're not going anywhere and you're just sitting on your ass all day like some of us do. Yes. No one's going to see the snail trail move and they'll just be like, look at that lazy prick just <laughs> sat there doing nothing. Yeah, but it's better than having the frog hands because then there's no... I don't see the use for the frog hands. I see use for the snail trail. Boom. Um, I, I'm going to go for frog hands because the more I think about the snail trail, the more it upsets me. Why? I Well, there are benefits, I guess. Like if you're in Tesco's, it'll make the aisle slippy and people fall <laughs> over, which would be quite funny. But yeah, frog hands. Can't can't tell you why. Just got a feeling. No, frog hands sounds fun. My parents sold their piano, so I'm not going to be playing that anytime soon. Oh. And last one. <laughs> would you rather have eyebrows that podcast? move all around your face? <laughs> yes. Or cry paint? Cry paint? That'd be baller. Do you get to pick what? the colour? Having eyebrows that move around your face would be... Sorry, no. what is cry paint? Is this a thing? As in cry paint? Would you cry Oh, okay. Paint Sorry, I thought it was, of a, your eyeballs. thought it was a pun or a reference or something. Um, so you're, you're hanging out and suddenly one of your eyebrows is a moustache or is on your cheek or mm. down your nose. Mine well, are pretty much like that anyway, but I'd rather cry paint. No, no, you just don't move. Well, they do move sometimes. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? You could have like one up on your forehead and one on your cheek. One, it could be really awkward. You don't know what the, uh, how scented your eyebrows are. One of them could be a dick and turn you into Hitler at the most inopportune moment. I mean, I've got a beard to cover that, so. True. Dan has a question. I was going to say, just on for the eyebrow option. Are my friends with the eyebrows? Can I tell them? <laughs> can I befriend them in some way? Um, you can only be friends with one of them. One. <laughs> well, then. I feel like they wouldn't be sentient. It would just be a thing that every six hours or something that they would. It's one of them my good eyebrow and one of them my bad eyebrow. So does one of them move at a time? Actually, yes, you can have that because I have one good eyebrow and one bad eyebrow, so you can have that. What? Ex. Blame. One of my eyebrows is better than my other one. Which one is which? Unfortunately, the good eyebrow is the one under my fringe, and the bad eyebrow is the one that's on show all the time. <laughs> that's bad. It's a bad choice, that, isn't it? As in, from an aesthetic point of view, Dan. Okay, you, you've, right. You've I was a bit confused yeah. there, sorry. I guess... Uh, 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 I guess... I can only raise one eyebrow as well, which also happens to be the good eyebrow. 
Can't raise the other one. Mm, I could do both. I'll, I'll go with the eyebrows and see if I can convince at least one of them not to <laughs> kill you in your sleep. Make me into a fool. I mean, I could probably live with just having eyebrows all just moving around. Just yeah. Can you shave them off? Oh yeah. Mm, no, they would grow back. Oh. What instantly? Could I take my face off? <laughs> no. John Travolta, no, oh. you can't. Since this is a movie podcast. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go for crying paint. Crying paint could be fun. It's quite artistic, isn't it? I guess. Yeah, I'm an artistic kind of guy, obviously. What uh, color of a uh, Durex color code are you going for? He doesn't get to choose. It just happens. D- so hang on, H- hang on. Did you say Durex or Dulux? <laughs> you said Durex. <laughs> 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 what color condom Whoops. paint do you want coming out of your eyeballs? Whoops. Sorry, apologies. At least we know he's being safe. I will have the ribbed colour paint, please. Pantone 336. This is a family podcast. Don't be silly, wrap your willy, everyone. Um, <laughs> what kind of colour? I mean, I don't know. I like a nice teal colour. I quite like a purple. You don't get to choose. Like an orange. Well, then I don't give a shit. I'm not going to see it anyway. You look like a fucking clown, though. You don't get to choose. Why? Do I have to cry more now that I cry paint? No, you... How much do you cry a day? Well, not at all. I think... Once in the last two years. Oh yeah, that's a point. You only cry when you. So the paint only comes when you cry. Actually, I'm swapping my fat answer because I barely cry at anything, so there'd be no difference in my life. Is it any time tears come out of your eyes? Like if you poke yourself in the eye and yeah. then you sneeze or whatever. It's like instead of tear ducks, okay. you have paint ducks. Paint ducks. <laughs> no, I'm still going for paint in the eyes. If I cried paint, I would do it because I cry more often than you guys. If I was the only person that could do it, and then I would get like some sort of fabric or canvas or something and like stick my face in it and make make art and be yeah. rich sounds like you'll get an eye infection pretty quickly well no because my body would be used to the my own paint if you had <laughs> salmon sort of tears would you have pink eye <laughs> no i'd have salmon eye mm-hmm. yeah but if someone <laughs> actually comments on it you can just say it's a tattoo or you were in jail and you got some tea <laughs> well you just tell them that you cry paint because you're awesome wait are your tear ducts in the middle don't you cry here not here. I don't know how tears work. You cry. You cry on the <laughs> inside of your eyes, right? Not the out. I don't know. Yeah, but just say, just say it's like a tattoo, and people go, "Oh, cool." Like no one fucking pays attention. No one's gonna go up to you and say, "Oh, that's a shit tattoo." Like no one's ever gonna fucking say that to your face. So they're always gonna go, "Oh, yeah, it looks nice." That's coming from someone without tattoos, though, isn't it? No, there's been people I've met who've seen tattoos on all the people in person and gone, "Oh, that's really cool." And in my mind, I'm thinking. That looks fucking awful. But no one's going to tell you otherwise, so yeah. So do you think, like, if you were walking down the street <sighs> and you'd been crying and you'd got paint down your cheeks, right, and you went outside, yeah, would you get more or less attention than if you had one eyebrow, like, up on your forehead and one on your cheek? I'll be fucking famous, Penny, because I would be the man who has the eyebrows that move buttons. I'll be on Conan. I'll be on fucking <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, and they'll be like, so you, your eyebrows move independently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, here's a million. Here's a Netflix documentary. Here's a million. I'll be fucking rich. <laughs> right, well, you do that and I'll cry pain and then we'll both be rich <laughs> and we can leave Andy. Oh, fine. Fair well, enough. Okay, what am I going for? Nothing? <laughs> You've got carrot fingers. <laughs> cool. Cool. I'll take that. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> but that was an anticlimactic end wasn't it oh good work guys well I thought I should do all the movie ones first but please send some in if you've got any good ones because I have run out of all good ones on the internet no it's very enjoyable I do love would you rather especially battling with Andy and our very different differences that sometimes we have oh sometimes we do agree with certain things yeah I do like the questions that come out of it yeah, it's more about like how Andy's mind is when he's like, <laughs> right, I need to I need to have all the details, all the deeds before I make this fucking pick. Because he mentioned playing the piano with frog hands, but not with carrot fingers. Could you play the piano with carrot fingers? Yeah, this is the first time. I think with frog hands, you'd be able to do, you'd be slightly more webbed. So it might be easier to do chords, but also that would definitely be more difficult with carrot fingers. Mm. Particularly if you can't bend in the joints. Yeah. I do have one more for you, Andy. Yeah. Would you rather be Spider-Man? Yeah. Spider-Man. Okay. Or get to relive the whole entire movie of Scott Pilgrim for one day. But you get to be Spider-Man for life. You get to play guitar, <laughs> get to sing some songs, you, you get to battle some exes, you get to win you over... What. Uh, what's her face? Ramona. Ramona, you know. What, That's what, a tough one. I genuinely don't think I can answer it. No, you have to. Because if I had, like, the Spider-Man... <laughs> I 
put him there. Powers. <laughs> Spiderman. <laughs> if I had the powers of Spiderman, <laughs> Spiderman, Spiderman, I wouldn't necessarily use them for good, but I would use them to get to work quicker. <laughs> Of course you would. Oh, imagine though, you could use them to get beers out of the fridge without getting up. Yeah. Very little in my life would change. I wouldn't go so, save people. So I would wait, just use wait, it for convenience. Wait, you're I'd fucking, shut the door from a distance. Your only, your only main reason is to commute better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. What can fucking... I, it's either I take the car or I fucking web sling across fucking Sussex. It'll take me half the time. That's your only reason. Yeah. Fucking brilliant. It's a tough one. That is a tough one. It's the most Andy answer of all fucking time. <laughs> but also living the life of Scott Pilgrim, like being Scott Pilgrim for a day would be great. Yeah. Depends if we're talking about the comic book version or the Movie, since the movie version. podcast. Yes. Right. So, th- yeah, that would be fun. Oh, which one? But I mean, I could see that anyway. I could learn the bass parts. I could do that this week if I could be asked. But I can't. You can learn on your piano. Right? I can't get to work quicker, can I? I can't. <laughs> Shut a door from a distance. Yeah, but you get to have cartoon animation things going on on the screen, and you get to ask about um, Pac-Man and interesting facts about Pac-Man. You know, you know the first time they came out with Pac-Man, he was called something else. Packy, packy. Yeah. Yeah. You get to go parties. You get to go to gigs. He was called Pac-Man, but they were worried they would kind of cross out part of the P. So it's yeah, a- I know the quote. Yeah, I get it. Right, we all know. But like, you get to go gig. You get to go to. Uh, you get a clubbing. You get to battle a uh, DJ, two DJs uh, with dragons. Like, Pen looks a- bored off her nut. Well, no, when you said you were going to be Jar Jar and change the world. Rather than be jabber and sit on your ass. Now you're like, you could be Spider-Man, but I'm not going to change the world. I'm just going to open doors and go to work. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, Ben. If I'm going to be Jar Jar, I'm going to be in a Star Wars universe. If I'm going to be... If I'm going to have the powers of Spiderman... Technically, we never discussed whether that was in that universe. So what you're saying is I've got to still live my same day-to-day life, <laughs> no, but I'm Jar Jar Binks with his webbed frog hands. <laughs> probably not. Well, how am I going to play the piano? How's he going to commute? <laughs> yeah. At least if I'm if I'm Spiderman, do I have to have like battle all the other villains, or the do I Spidermans. essentially just live Depends the same if you life to I have now, anyone. but with like web shooters and can climb buildings, which won't be helpful because I don't like heights. Well, that might be, Toby Maguire conquered his fucking fear of heights. No, you can. You, there will be crimes going on in the background, like you know when you see the start of the origin story of Spider Man, and he's like, yeah. "Oh, I wish I could help," but you'll be just there going, "Oh, I wish I could help." Anyway, the football's beer. on. Yeah, you grab a beer. <laughs> when Uncle grab Ben dies, is it just a bag of rice or? <laughs> <laughs> Depends which universe is. Uh, is Aunt May fit or is she not? Which universe what? are you picking? I don't know. You've ruined this now. <laughs> uh, I don't feel like I should answer the is Aunt May going to be fit <laughs> in my Spiderman life. <laughs> I think I should just leave that. Okay. Yeah, I think so, we should. So yeah, I'll have the power of Spiderman, please. Okay, F- thank you for that. Anyway, that's <laughs> that's us for today. <laughs> Fucking hell. Our movie for next week, remember, is Go. So Go. Watch it from 999. Check out Timothy Elephant's hair in that one, everyone. Woo! Yeah, and his incredibly hot bod. Oh, yeah. Dan said that, not me. As Penny will probably mention about fucking 50 times next week. I don't just need to. I yourself. mention how great he is all the time. Yeah, but I know you will. You'll just be like, oh, he looks so fit in this scene. He looks so fit in this scene. It's going to get tiresome. He does look really fit in it. He's topless for most uh, of the movie, if I remember correctly. Yeah, great. Anyway, we're watching that next week. Penny, what's the socials, for love of God? You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Unusual Suspects Pod and on Twitter at Unusual Podspect. I am at Penny... <laughs> I was going to make a really stupid joke. I'm not going to now. Mine is Penny underscore photo pit. <clears throat> Probably. So what's your Twitter handle, Penny? I'm uh, going to make a stupid joke. <laughs> How do you spell that? Yeah. Penny underscore photo pit. Hang on. Let me just get a pen. I bailed on. Um, I'm cutting all this out. No, you're not. I'm at uh, Dan Talks a lot. That choice is uh, 21. And Andy's at Andy plays the piano. Andy's at Spiderman. Oh. So has so someone that- taken the Spiderman Twitter handle, by the way? Because I want it. 
if someone's is got it. Is it spelled differently to Spider-Man? Yes. No, it's the same spelling. No, it's not. No, it's the same spelling. It's just pronounced Spiderman. Because <laughs> then I assume someone's got that Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're saying Spider-Man is not different from Spiderman. Spelling-wise. Spiderman is the same spelling as the yeah. Spider-Man. Of course it is. Unless it's double Ds. Wait. It's not. It's not double Ds. Boo. It's a single D. One D. Dan looks really upset by that. It's because he's not a fan of One Direction. Or spelling. He's so confused. Or hosting. <laughs> uh, we'll be back <laughs> next week. Thanks, everyone. We'll watch some movies for next week, probably, maybe. Yeah. Enjoy. Go, if you're watching it. I know I did. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> Don't forget, with great power comes some responsibility, but not much. Uncle Ben's. Long <laughs> <Ron> Grey Rice. <laughs> 